additions and changes to the agenda. I have one change to the agenda, and that is the item relating to the curb cut application and curb cut application assessment form is 90% done but not fully ready for prime time, so I'm going to bump that off until um, another meeting. And I have one thing to correct. Okay. Under future agenda items planning commission, it's not the town plan update, it's zoning. Okay. So we just need to do the agenda for that, make sure we all the right I have a move the consent agenda to be adopted. Second. Any other discussion topics? Okay, all in favor please say aye. 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 I have, sorry, I have one more thing. Okay. Um, May 9th, we're going to have the dog warrant. Oh, I have that on my, I have a whole, when we go, when we get to later in the agenda where we actually rush through the, not rush yeah, through, I, just rush through. I, mean, I wrote no. it down. Okay. I good. wrote it down and okay. several other things that we got. Okay. So, okay, uh, Rick, we are on roads report. Uh, right now, so are we, are we doing that with Alfred? Are we going to talk about it? Um, he is planning on coming here. Do you want to move? I think oh, we're, we're ahead. We are way ahead. Okay, why don't we do, let's do main nine agenda items. Yeah, I mean, I can talk to you, but I'd be good to have him. We can give us more details on that. Uh, so May 9th. So what I have on May 9th is the items from that we teed up last time, the shade tree preservation plan hearing with Neil Maker. That starts at 6. Mm -hmm. um, Denise, you're going to have your task for well-functioning board, I mean the blue list, mm -hmm. things that you did as chair slash select board assistant, just all behind the scenes to make things hum. Uh, we want to talk about speed carts and the permanent electric speed alerts uh, as and lightning ridge traffic calming. And Rick, that's a you and Alfred particular topic. Uh, Curtis Pond, uh, John and Denise reviewing the Dubois King permit from 2013. We've had yeah, we've been carrying that. Is that gonna be ready? I don't. I've got to double check my calendar because John, we have a meeting with the Curtis Pond. We do. People, I think it's. May, I want to say May 5th, but I could be wrong, it may be May 15th. So depending, we may want to wait until after we have this meeting with Curtis Pond folks. Okay, so, so can I, I'll have to get, I'll have to double check. 15th is on a Sunday, the 5th is on Thursday. Okay, it might be the 5th. So, wait, so that might be okay for to having the queue for the night. What time would that be, 7 p.m.? I think so. And how much time do you, you we got, we got a lot of this, uh, discussion-y items. So let's finish going through the list. So also, since we met last, what's popped onto our list? Uh, dog license, dog warrants issues. Uh, this arises out of people not paying their license fees. Yeah, we do it every year. Yep. Uh, the 20, we are hearing from the Planning Commission that we will need a 2023 uh, townwide reappraisal. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will likely have two DRB appointments and one interview, one, one being an interview, well, I guess they were both the interviews actually, uh, yeah. that night to round out the DRB slate. Okay, so that'll be another full time. Another full time and filling the last alternate seat. Yep. Um, and there may be a conservation commission appointment or reappointment. And then finally, the East Montpelier Fire Department has uh, teed up some items that they want us to approve relatively soon that I sent you guys in an email. So that, that is a long list of substance, very, all of them very substance driven. So yeah, that'll take us what is me. not substancy? Do we have to make a decision that night about the shade tree preservation plan? 
I I looked at the notice that I don't know. We should And I don't remember that that was in that was even something we talked about last time. I know I saw his Neil's notice that he posted and he has he gave us the draft plan quite a while ago. I can dig it out and email it to folks. That's in the agenda in the meeting folder from last meeting. Is it? Uh, yep, from not the 11th. Was it the one? Whenever we decided on the. Yeah, it was the 11th. Uh, then, then it's in the folder from that night. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't have to decide that night. You have a hearing and then. Right, and then I don't know whether there's an opportunity after the hearing for people to file public comments. I guess I'd have to go back and look at the notice again. The, the statute, actually, I have that from last time. The statute just says you have to have a hearing. Right. It doesn't say anything more than that. And this, and this okay, so now my memory's coming back to me. This is one of the questions I actually asked. Is this the type of hearing that runs on a timeline and has a particular process attached to it? No, it is not. This is the type of hearing that is making sure people are aware and have an opportunity to come forward and say what's on their minds. Okay, so it's not an ordinance then, it's just a, mm -hmm. we just adopt the plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we could do it that night, it would, then it would be done. Then it would be done. Yep. Um, and if we're inclined, to, well, okay, so if, here's the... It depends, I guess, on what we hear from people. Right, here's, that's right. If we're inclined... If we're, well, we'll know then, right? We'll know whether we need to discuss. We should put it off. We should at least, well, if we, I mean, and who we, know, we don't know, you know, if people show up and have comments and there needs to be changes, do we have to hold another public hearing? Um, or do we just make the changes based on the comments? I think, and who makes the changes? Is it then the select board's document or is it still the tree warden's document? I think we, we can leave it with the tree warden. The, the, we shall hold a minimum of one public hearing concerning the plan for the purpose of soliciting public input. That's it. Okay. So we can... We might have to figure it out that I time. think we should warn it as something that we will approve so that people are prepared for that possibility. If nobody shows up and says anything, then we may decide to that approve it. We want to approve it and we would want to have that option, but. Yeah, and if we put it on to approve it and we decide not to, that's okay too. That's right. Um, yeah. Okay. So we will warn as hearing and approval. How long is the, if the dog licensing is something we do every year, is that? It's like five minutes. Is it even that or is it consent agenda? I think we want to pass it around. Unless we, if we get it ahead of time and we look at it, then it's consent. Okay, so that's something we just need to ask for. And for the speed cart thing, do we need to get Price quote on one of those. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. They're like, I think they were like 2,000 or 2,400, the ones we did last year. Is that right? Something like that. Talking about the signs. The one, yeah, those flashing ones, does that sound about right? The breakaway pole? I can't yeah. Remember. Yeah. The breakaway so, pole. Well, yeah, they're only 2,000. Huh? Seems like that. I've right. seen them, they used to be. Well, back when I was the RPC, we got them for between like a thousand to fifteen hundred. Yeah, so the sign type, not the pole now that break away. But so Rick, that could be the sign separate from the pole. Can yeah. you take a few notes on what we want to cover in that window at the next agenda? So I know what I'm interested in is where are the permanent ones? I thought they didn't even hardly really work. That was the last time. Do they done. work? <laughs> they work well, great. Okay, where are they? Well, I don't know if ours work great, but they work great. Where are us. where are they? Do they work? Do any of them need replacing? That, that just the like let's let's have a like a check-in and a housekeeping. Where are the permanent ones? 
And then how many carts do we have? Well, and we have, yeah, we have well, we one, have one one cart that we, we share one. with what tabs? It was Marshfield, Marshfield or something, but then something happened. You, you guys are answering the questions rather than we're going to, let's Oh, oh that was a That was, a, that was rhetorical a, These question. are the things to talk about next I time. So oh, we, okay. And so Rick, okay. can, Rick and Alfred can bring us, okay. Here's yeah, the questions well, we had. Yeah. Here's the information that we have. Then we all have the same information from which to have a discussion about um, is this sufficient? What are the what are the places we're constantly hearing from that aren't represented here? Do we need more of one or the other type of which? How much do they cost? I think it's a general. And then the other hook to it is what are the options for Lightning Ridge traffic call, calming? Alfred asked us if he could move the cart from Lightning Ridge, and we said yes, you have that authority, but. At the same time, you know. So where should we have? Where where is it, where are the places in town that we have a constant hum about speeding and and a more permanent solution might be useful? To yeah. me, that's that's kind of the rounding out of the next discussion because next time's discussion that's what we we're that's the discussion we were starting to have mm -hmm. two meetings ago, I think. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. Cause we talked about a permanent flashing speed limit sign on Lightning Ridge, but it would be good to have one of the ones that you can move around for like yeah. places on the county road or well, yes. whatever, Ridge, Main Kamali Road, you know, wherever. Lightning yeah. Ridge could easily be a candidate for a permanent. But I think we ought to be look at, I mean, we definitely want to have some movable, so. Yeah. But yeah, but this is the, this is the discussion because when Alfred right. was talking about it last time, I realized I'm not clear on, wait, where are they now and how many do we have and um, well, and we so had talked those facts, and we had talked, and we got the flashing signs about putting one at the school, and we're trying to get to school mm -hmm. to help pay for it, and they wouldn't. So that's just some yeah. background. Well, I don't think the process has that much to do. You know, I think Lightning Ridge, because of the way it's straight line, mm -hmm. fairly flat. I mean, yeah. So I guess I'd be interested yeah. to know how much is one of the flashing, how much is it yeah. from a movable speed. Well, I think for us too, what we'll want to talk, I'm talking to the RPC right now too, because I'm working on the speed study stuff for, for uh, County, County Road. County Road, right, actually so probably what, should not be part of it. So, but, and, and this will be part of it, because, you know, really I've looked at those 85th percentile numbers and they're high. If we lower that, you know, people are still going to speed. So it's going to take a speed reminder. You know, so we're going to have to have, if we were to say lower that, can you, can we separate, we'll yeah, can we later. keep County Road separate because that's, I think, a, not that it is not unworthy, it's so worthy that it should get its own time and I have it as a future agenda item. Right, because you Without, and I are supposed to get together. Yeah. We will, and we will. I'm just, the I'm the bottom sure. line question is how much, uh, the more, the more you can have this documentation to us, Rick, by, you know, Let's obviously, the, the air, sooner, sooner. Yeah, yeah, several days in advance, I'll, I'll touch you. then, right. then how much time, I don't think we have a dis well. Do we want to have a decision point? I next think we week? could. I can. I think we could say we want to make a decision if we have all the information. So, and you let us know what the proposal will be. So, well, make I, a decision, but on what? Yeah, I mean, I can. I. I mean, obviously. I'm going to try to make this a 20 minute item. Yeah, but okay, but I. I don't think we don't have to make it. We can decide on a certain road. Right? There's no reason you have to make. I think. I, mean, I think because there's some. There are definitely issues here that are going to be roads that we want to reduce speed. Right, but I think what, what I'm hearing is Portable. we want to look at, do we want to order something and have it put in on Lightning Ridge somewhere? And do we want to order and pay yeah, for a new yeah. speed cart? That's what I see as the possible decisions. And then what where we, where speed we put the speed cart, the movable one that you tow, that's a decision, you know, that oh, can I, be made as needed. I think what you do is you have them. We, we, I think I think what it'll be probably it's at least one permanent on Lightning Ridge. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to talk about this. Yeah, no, we will. So you have to move. That's the question. Right. Right. So that's and those are those are the answers we want to have. Yeah. Maybe you make a decision. So I'm writing this down as the decision points, but Rick, I, I was equally open to you just letting me know. Here's what the proposal will be. Yeah, that um, sounds really good. So, but as a penciled in, we have. A decision on two two different issues, as Denise just articulated, related to that item. How long and uh, just how long is the Curtis Plot permit from 2013? Just give me a time. 
I would, would say. And is there a decision point? I'm not sure if there's a decision point yet. Uh, I would put down at least 15. It might be. Okay, 15 minutes. 20. It depends. Um, I got to go back and look at my notes. Townwide reappraisal. Um, I well, I think it's now you know here we are we're teeing up the item, but it's really just teeing up that item and trying to keep it short next time. Yeah, I think the an introduction to what has to happen, mm -hmm. when it has to happen. Maybe there's a way to find out how much it will cost because if it's happening in 2023, we'll have to budget for it. Right. We should get an RFP out now because uh, my conjecture is that statewide everyone's going to be doing it because of the because of the market the boon yes so okay so that's what we will talk about yes, next our week RFP and um mark. i think it will be tasking an rfp to one of us um for development for a future review well yeah and, and we could always seems like we did an rfp before so we have we don't have to reinvent the wheel, I hope. Right. Uh, we will have a DRB appointment, um, interview and appointment, so that I think a candidate oh, nice. deserves 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and the East Montpelier Fire Department yeah. item. That could be. If let's maybe circle back to that because now Alfred is here. Um, and yeah, let's, yeah. let's circle back on the at the maybe at the end of the meeting and Don't pick up on that one. Us? Alfred, we're ready for Rhodes report. Who's here? No one's here. It's fine. It's oh, spring. Yes, and the roads are now done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> Can't win, right? A few hours. One mile from the next. They're much, much better, thank you. Yeah. I know you guys really... Yeah, the drive over tonight was very different than two weeks ago. No, yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, Alfred and Rick, floor is yours. Rick, sorry, Mr. Uh, I'll bring up to Kirk, uh, Kirk No, that's later. We're, we're gonna do oh, these right. other engine oh, demos, the, the bridge thing. I was looking the at bridge, the, right. the not some pictures. Really. Yeah. Who knew? I mean, the report. Says it all, pictures say even more. Um, we are waiting, to, we've applied for a grant. We are waiting results from that. Uh, a grant, is this for the grant for the temporary repair or a grant yes. for the total, the big repair? Temporary, temporary, temporary repair. Temporary temporary repair. Temporary 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 temporary. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's pretty. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's the bridge in the town. Yeah, right these are the town. These are the towers. When you read that report, too, especially on that permanent repair. On the town street side. Noted there that what's not included in that price is, is a bypass if we do that, number one. And number two, bypass if you have to come up with a temporary bridge. I mean, ideally, I don't know what the, if, if there's a way to accelerate it and close it for a few weeks, I don't know how fast that, that can. Yeah, you actually you cut the cost in okay. half. Yeah. There's two routes that come through, through South Woodbury Village and then come through Peter and Grove. I would definitely advocate for closing it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When we well, get to that yeah. point, we're right. nowhere near close to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when we were talking about this stuff on 14, because it was on 14 and it was a state project, this is a town project as right. opposed to a state so, project, right? So. Because I remember on the Route 14 stuff, eight, we asked them to do the you know, the quick fix thing without having to do what they did. Right. But they can't, but they couldn't detour traffic onto back roads, but since this is callous, right. we, it seems we like can, we can detour well, it's a back road on anywhere. our own back road. We can detour them to anywhere. Right. Why don't, all back why, don't we, why don't we, um, all of us just stop talking for a minute and we'll let you guys tell us what, what we need to know, um, what you see as next steps, Where's well, there's really nothing more to do until okay. we hear back from, from the state whether we receive the grant or not. Okay. Uh, the engineer has made a report and recommendations, um, mm -hmm. and we've applied for the grant. So we just really need to wait to see whether we are going to achieve that.
that grant or receive that grant. When will we know? Um, it's usually June-ish, I think, when they, when they, but this year everything is different because everything is so backed up and, and they'll give us a short staff. And, short staff. Yeah, exactly. so, and they'll give us a grant for a temporary fix? It's a structures grant. Well, that's part of their decision. Yeah. That's okay. part of their decision of where they put the money, you know. Because my question was, does it make sense to put, I forget how much money it was, oh, is it 100000 Yeah, it's 100000 $80,000 for a temporary, and it's going to cost five hundred or 600000 to do the permanent fix. Does it make sense to just do the permanent fix instead of doing two? Well, I think the thing of it is that the, the temporary fix you could do this summer. Right. The permanent fix, the total repair, will not happen this summer. There's just no way. Because, okay. first of all, we don't have the funds. Second of all, the contractors are already booked up for the yeah. summer. They're yeah, just that's right. That's it's true. Got to, it's got to be engineered. It's in May. Yeah. 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 So, you, so it's certainly, if we couldn't do the right of this year. Mm -hmm. And the, the just, the hundred thousand is the temporary engineering. Well, that, that's the temporary plus. That's the temporary, temporary plus cost. Plus okay. up to twelve thousand for engine. So it, it could be a hundred to hundred and fifteen thousand dollar project. Where is that included? The hundred thousand. No, it says so plus engineering plus, fees plus between eight and twelve thousand, depending upon the amount of construction oversight needed. Right. And right. we would have to have somebody else do the repairs. It's a road crew can do this. That's right? correct. No, that yeah. is. So do you have a line on a new engineer, given that we lost our favorite guy? Uh, yes, this is this report comes from the Wolf oh, engineer. Wolf. Yeah. And, uh, Chris Dunn has worked. They could. That's good. Okay. Could be the right about and trying to get the company that is sort of taking over from Doug Newton, um, but they don't do structural. Mm -hmm. uh, they do more civil, civil stuff, so they opted out of this one. So I, my next step was Dwolf, because mm -hmm. they're well known and he's, mm -hmm. he's, a, you know, he's a good He's done Chris is a first grade structural engineer. Is yeah. it? So, yeah. 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 Alfred, if we get this grant, remind me it covers what? What percentage, or is it a dollar? It, we get eighty thousand dollars. Is eighty percent? Uh, so we would have to cover it. Right. 80, it covers eighty percent of whatever it is. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we would have to come up with twenty percent match. Yes. Out of the hundred. Which the engineering is also eligible for the grant. So that that extra twelve to fifteen thousand he put in mm -hmm. would be covered under the grant. So that would be part of the total amount. Okay. So the town pays twenty percent. Of the total combined, yeah. and so if we don't, if we if we get the grant, then the path forward for this summer is fairly straightforward. Um, uh, I mean, yes, there's a lot of work, right. but but yes, there's a path forward to get that information ASAP, so that I can right. start lining up contractors and you know yeah. get the ball rolling. Like this. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get it, then we are going to have to think because this is this is not an optional project. No, no, yeah. this is a must. Yeah, right. right. It's, well, it's, it's a safety issue. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I've got it. The engineer recommended I close part of the bridge, narrow it up, mm -hmm. because yeah. the one, the outside beam, is the one that's that's compromised. compromised. And have you done that? Yes. Yes. You have done that. Okay. Yeah. And can we put up? Is there any way to put up some signs posted so that heavy vehicles don't go over it? That they have to go another way? Well, I've got it. Oh, you mean? Because I would think like some of these heavy vehicles. Well, that's the, the don't most of the bridge is fine. Mm -hmm. just, there's four wheels, so three of them are fine. It's just the outside one. Right, but if and heavy trucks keep going over, it won't make it worse. Um, couldn't see the blade, but I, the engineer didn't recommend that. So okay. I'm going to go with his. He okay. said the, the rest of it is fine just to get the weight off of that one side where the beam is, is mm -hmm. uh, undermined. I, I do still have to make a burn to stop the water from going into that sinkhole that is now created. Mm -hmm. It's just a short ways. Um, and I'm gonna just, just do that with some blacktop. I'll just make a small burn to force the water around it, um, which I meant to do that today, but it just was crazy. Monday's or 
Yeah, Monday. We're going to forget about Mondays. Okay. On that, too, I mean, if you're going on to the full project, too, we just have to look at the cost. I mean, if there's, if we, again, if we have to do a temporary right away bridge, which isn't ideal, I mean, then that will double the cost. And if you get, you know, then there's also the point that Chris made in there, it was a good one, you know, it's the decorative, if you use any of the decorative fascia type stone, like they use over in, in, in uh, Adamant, uh, those are costly too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if so that could conceivably. So, yeah, so that, that so t tell us a little bit about, we're, we're focusing on the temporary fix for the summer, but are you looking beyond that to a permanent fix? Yeah, that, well, that's the start. First thing to get this thing fixed, but yeah, we have to. What's the timeline for a permanent fix? You, assuming we get a, purpose, a temporary fix this summer. Conceivably next, next, next year. How soon do we have to apply for the grant for the permanent fix so that we get it in the queue? Oh, they come out, yeah, they're due April 15th every year. Okay, so not, so, so we, we wouldn't could, apply for the permanent fix right, this you year. Can't, you can't apply for the permanent fix. Oh, okay. You know, we found out it was just after the 15th that had to No, be. no, it was before, but we okay. applied for the for the temporary fix. Okay. Because these grants are only good for, uh, was it 175000 or? Yeah. I think it's right there. Yeah, it's not there. Their max is 175000 Oh, uh, so we're so going to So this grant will pay for the whole bridge. Next year. Even so next is there other grants we can get for the permanent fix? That'll be a Toby question. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the structure is, is what we've been using a lot right. of um, for these larger culverts that we've been replacing. So. so next budget season, we need to find out if we can get some additional yeah, funding or think, whether we have to budget for it. I mean, I think if we do this temporary fix, it's going to buy us some time. Mm -hmm. you know, like, as far as this particular bridge, it's going to buy us probably 10 years, 15 years. Oh, okay. Time. You that's hang well, hey, on though. You just said next year. Well, that's the I'm, saying, I'm saying if we do the temporary fix okay. this year, then we buy we can that's buying us more time for the permanent fix. The permanent fix is a complete new bridge, yeah. and of course, then you're going to be people are going to want a sidewalk. People are going to want aesthetically okay. pleasing. You know what I mean? So that's going to. So it could be next year, but that's just a but. But more likely would be out I, five to ten years. Right? Uh, yeah, I was saying three to five in my mind, but yeah, to, to allow for planning and have fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then we don't need to keep talking about it right now. Do you have any questions? Uh, my question: What's going on with the grade? We have one down. On one the bridge. Down. Anything on the bridge? Uh, no. Any more questions on the bridge? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Verification. <laughs> Now you want to, now, that's now, you, can now you can ask about the grader. So, so I, I, saw that, I saw that we have an invoice that the grader was, would not stay running. Yeah. Is that the same grader as the broken So in grader, different issue. Um, it turned out that it was a simple fix when they came. It was a loose fitting um, that just stalled right in the middle of grader. Electrical and, thing? Uh, no, it was the fuel. Oh. Right. That was a $1,700 bill, right? Yes. Yeah. Most of that was travel time. Jeez. And I don't know how they got $900 worth of labor, but they came immediately. And I fix a leaking fuel line? Well, he was there. He had to diagnose it. Yeah. You know, he went through the whole computer thing to find to, uh, to troubleshoot it. Yeah. And That's why it cost $900, because there was a computer right. involved. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so that's fixed, and then Thursday we went to take it out again, and the bracket that holds the air conditioner pump on broke, and it sheared two bolts off inside the block. Oh no! Oh gosh! We've since got those bolts out. Uh, I've got a part coming; should be here hopefully tomorrow or the next day, which is the new bracket. It all goes back together. Okay. And you guys are doing that? It's fix. We're going to yeah, it's mine ourselves. Okay. I mean, when you have a company come, this, the grader was in the middle of the road. Yeah. And we had a big furrow of dirt in the middle of the road. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't take the time. So, right. you know, with all the other things, like I got another grader going, I got trucks hauling gravel. I'm like, I just, I call my phone now. 
Yeah. So he came, got me going, and we have to pay. Yeah. 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 This is a good cost. What happens? Yeah. yeah. That's fine. But this next repair, we're going to do it all in house. It's going to be all us. It's going to be like five hundred dollars for that part. And um, Peter Daly, I have to give him the credit. He pulled. He got those bolts extracted. Extracted. Nice. Out of block. Nice. And it's, that's a nasty yeah. job. You freaking yeah, work right there, so yeah. right there near, near the water jacket. And yeah. if, you, the, if the drill bit goes off one time, yeah. Then you oh, just, yeah. Nice so job. Just, Takes yeah. patience. Get a little credit for that. Yeah. So, um, so awesome. yes, I, I'm hoping we should get the part tomorrow. It won't take as long to get it back together. And we'll be back <coughs> two graders in action. Great. Um, we graded. Moscow or not? Do the road, do the road extension in the West County Roadway up by the Woodbury Line today, because that was really bad. Oh, nice. It's dried up, so we're able to. Do. But when they talk rain tomorrow, it's like we get rain every other day. It's it's hard to. Yeah. Yeah. We might get, we might get some. And they said we might get some snow on Thursday. I know. Yeah, it just as as you know more. More fun. More slow down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. pulling gravel harder, so it's not like it's wasted time. Or so. Yeah, we're trying to replenish the gravel pile because we use so much gravel for mud season. Um, more so than I'm usual, right? More, way more than usual. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I want to, you know, replenish that so we got it on hand. So that's what. You know, one time you said something like four hundred and seventy-five ton yards. Yards. Yeah. Yeah, How many I, yards fit in one of those trucks? They're 12 or 4, 14 usually. Yeah. Depending on where you buy it. Yeah. Kind of like buying some fire companies, Well, some companies sell it by the yard because they don't have scales. And then others do have scales and they sell it by the time. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. but usually it's between 12 and 14 yards per truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the spare truck that we bought is working out great. Good running truck. The guy's it's the wrong in. color. Right. It's the wrong color. I, yeah, I was going to say, I've or seen it. It's, 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 color. A, it's, a, it's a different color. It's a different color. color. What's it green? It's green. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But, and we're not going to bother to paint it, right? No. No, no. I think it looks good. No. It didn't come with the brakes. We had to buy brakes on That's always extra. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I think everything is going smooth. Uh, I've been working on getting the chloride trailer together because that's really on its last leg. Already? That's, yeah. Wow. It's, I mean, it was used when I bought it. Oh, was it? Was, it? And I bought that, I want to say, almost 10 years, 8, 10 years ago. The chloride just eats it up. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Up. And we flush that and it still eats it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the pump, I searched for a new pump today, which you don't need to all know all the details, but yeah. that's a large part of my time spent today was looking for a new pump. I couldn't find one. Good luck. The dealer that I usually buy, they said they just don't have them. They, don't, they just don't have them. So I started shopping down here local. And I think I've got one coming from Tool Warehouse. So oh. It's a two inch gas operated. Hmm. Um, so I was trying to get that ready for when it, you know, because any day they're going to get dusty. Um, well, it already the hard. sun out and the wind it just dries it right out. And, it's amazing, one extreme to the other. Yeah. yeah. How about mowing, Alfred? Mowing? Well, yeah. There's nothing to mow yet. But, I, when, yeah. when <laughs> but you're, you're, right. you're spending, when you're out looking for a pump, you're thinking about yes. looking forward is to that, mowing, right? Is that guy going to mow again? What's his name? Uh, I haven't contacted him um, just because of, I just haven't thought of that yet. Um, last year, he kind of figured out got super busy and they lost a bunch of help so they put like some roots on him so he was working more over time not able to to help us but with that said I mean we've got a pretty good number of guys mm -hmm. right now yep you know with the two part-time guys and and the four full-time mm -hmm. we're still looking for one full-time but right mm -hmm. uh, so that's so that fifth person helps, and having two part timers helps. 
Well, we don't have a fifth person. We only still have. No, I know. But you're looking if if, if, if you did, yeah. Right. And we can always advertise for somebody from Owen if we have to. Right. Yeah, I've got to reach out to the people uh, that that we came up with a form for opting out of the oh, roadside billing. And so people don't have to sign an agreement. Yeah, you have to maintain it. The, the, the form is for private, 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 private roadside, or private, private roadside, private maintenance. maintenance. Yeah. Not, private not maintenance. necessarily opting out. But well, that's what I mean. It's keeping the yeah. grass. Like if they yeah. don't meet it, they will. Then that. Is there a whole thing going on? Now we're going to go back. Yeah, well, the form requires them to tell us what the plan is and come here for approval. But no, I just want to make sure that, you know, April, we're not, I know it's too soon to mow, but it won't be any time at all that Lightning Ridge is going to be, you know, full of, is it Cherville that comes, oh, Cherville. Cherville that comes early and Wild Parsons right on its heels. Right. So with that said, I'm wondering, should we, and maybe I should have mentioned it before, should we have a deadline for that application? People. Because I, I mean, I just don't want somebody to come June first and say, "Oh, I don't want you to mow. I've already planned to mow. I've already got my roots set. I've already got things. You know what I mean?" Yeah. There should be some sort of a deadline for you know, if you want, if you want this special treatment, May first, you have to have your or something, whatever the date you guys want to choose. Yeah, people probably aren't going to think about it until they see the stuff growing. Then it gets mowed. So it, right, so it gets mowed, and then they'll apply through the permit. Well, we're just going to let people who have requested in the past know. And I will say to them ASAP. Well, that yeah, I don't. I think are we okay if we if, if at least it's that level? Rick says we need May one. No, that's five days. But by May fifteenth. May fifteenth. Yeah, we're going to want to. Make sure we can back if Alfred says no or whatever. We need to be able to have a conversation so it's considered. It's going to be controversial to first. Remember. It's going to be. We it's going to be here. We, or, those are those forms are all the applications will all come here. We're not, not here. We're no, we're not, no, 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 no. The board, the board makes that. Uh, the it's board's going to have it. But I don't. Yeah, I think it's okay if right. you say by the end of May fifteenth. Yeah. And, there, and, and we didn't build that in, and it's not what's on the town's website. So I think we'll be on that. We'll have to deal with onesie, twosies. But if we let the people we know will be interested know that they need to have the request in by May 15th for the select board to consider. Do you think it's kind of putting a line on top of the document on the website? Like, nah, nah. We could do that. We could okay. just have do Lisa that. make sure. To, well, why don't we make a formal motion? <laughs> Well, I'm wondering though, if we really want to do that, we should that be more really, formal about it. I don't know that we really need to do that. If you're going to call people. Do it, because people, if someone looks at it, that yeah. we need to be consistent. If I'm going to tell them, we should also be in print, because somebody might go and see that and. Then I'm going to say, if okay. it's town wide, May 15th is too tight. That's only two weeks as a practical matter. Yeah. So. But so, when are you going to start mowing though? June? Uh, when it's ready, but yeah, probably it's the beginning of June. Beginning of June. Yeah, so we could say, um, when do we meet in June? We could just plan to look at all the applications one night. Yeah, do you think we're going to have a lot? Well, yeah, I think we'll probably have two. Yeah, um, or actually say four or five of those. Huh? Are you going to put one in? For what moment? Yeah. No private, moment. private maintenance. Yeah, I should put one in too. Okay, so. That's three. I can think of. So June 1 is a Wednesday, and we, we don't meet until the 13th, which is honestly too late. Right. Would we want to have... All well, right. You know what? If you put in a May 15th deadline, people will have to get moving. Yep. All right. Right? All right. So... Well, it's, I mean, they can come after, but they run the risk of getting moving. Right. 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 Before their current. Yep. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, so, so we can do whatever we have after the 15th. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're, we're slightly adapting what we talked about. We're, so the motion would be to um, authorize Rick to connect with Jeremy, who's already posted that thing. Actually, I guess I'll have to revise the thing. Yeah, if you I will revise the thing. The motion is we're going to revise the thing. Applications are due by May 15th. And we'll repost to the website. And we will plan to review and discuss them 
on the 16th. No, nope, the 23rd. 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 Right. That's okay. That's good. All right. So in that, there, embedded in there, what I just said in that motion is that we're agreeing on a May 15th deadline for private maintenance of public roadside applications. Is there some, is there somebody ready to make that motion? So moved. Okay. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Oh shoot, we didn't warn this item. Well, we can talk about it again next time. <laughs> no, All right. Try to I'll, I'll encourage anybody if they yeah. have concerns to show up. If they have any, if uh, anybody has concerns, yeah. we can and we the, we can put this on a consent agenda for next week. Right. Too. Right. All right. So let's for the ninth. Yep. Yeah, consent agenda to ratify this on the ninth. Okay. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong. Um, okay, how are we doing on time? 7.41. Just enough time for an East Cal stormwater project update. I talked, I just got, I put in a call to East Central Vermont a few weeks ago and I just talked to Bonnie tonight, she called me back. And she said East Water, that <coughs> stormwater, there's nothing we have to do right now. They are <coughs> awaiting uh, the new planner, the new grace, which is a guy named Brian, is he's reaching out to the state right now to find out what the status of the grant is. Good. And so as soon as they hear, they'll be back in touch with us. Right. And that doesn't that's not a project for this year anyways, right? It's next no. year. Yeah, we have to Okay, so sorry, and then we will go uh, <coughs> and then uh, and then the Kent Hill Culver. That project award, you know, that the award, that will be sometime around mid to late summer that we hear back. There's, again, there's nothing else we have to do okay. until that time. Yeah, no, it's just but, good to have the updates because it's yeah, I want to make sure. I want to make sure that we did. We had those mid, mid process with Grace, Travel. and I want to make sure. <laughs> right, right, they get lost on the shuffle. It's it's not. Not. And so they're. And they've got staff in place already, so for for, mm -hmm. for Pam anyway. I don't think for Grace yet. But. Yeah. So I'm going to carry this as an ongoing issues pending. Um, yeah, definitely on the stormwater was touch base next. I mean, I may know more by next. I'm just going to call this. I'm going to change this this lead to be issues pending awaiting further development. Mm -hmm. The Worcester Cell Tower, the ARPA funds, East Cal Stormwater Project. If we can keep it on there, it's not going out. I mean, well, it'll help remind us. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's just, it's just it. here. Um, I'm not going to put it on the agenda unless you tell me on the time on the agenda. I can okay. bring it up on the road with it. And don't forget, we have to get the computer set up. Can it see with your camera show? For Zoom. Okay. Do you want to come? I've never done it. Um, okay, so anything else in rows? Like, uh, anything, those are the two the Moscow Woods abutment and the East Cal Stormwater Project are the two that we specifically noted we didn't talk about. We've had, had some other good updates. Okay, uh, I think we're ready to turn to the right of way permits. Uh, Jerry Parton is here. Jerry, you're welcome to join us up here if you'd okay. like. Okay. Um, you don't have to. Rick. You don't necessarily have to start. I think Alpha, I'm going to let you and or Rick speak about this. That right away application, right away. Yeah, well, it's, it's very straightforward as I see it. Uh, you need to replace the sewer line, and the most comfortable place for a Leechfield is across the road from his house. And so he needs to, I guess you're going to bore, right? You're going to bore a hole underneath the road and, and pull a pipe in. So the sewer line can go underneath the road. So, question. What, why are we requiring a boring? Would it cost more, does it? I'm not, I never required oh, okay. anything. That was, okay. that was the engineer. It's in the oh. 
about the Chase and Chase uh, engineers. Okay. It is signed in Perk Tess and the, uh, the best and the only really location is across the street. No, but I meant bringing in a horizontal boring rig as right, opposed to a, a, a backhoe that's going to so cost you a lot of money. Somewhere. Yeah, that we was, don't normally require that. Yes. Yeah, that, that was uh, on the contractor that we hired that they thought that was the best route. Uh, Jim Corbin. Yeah. And uh, his work with Chase, the Craig Chase, and Jim kind of collaborating on that. Mm -hmm. that okay. Just want to let you know it's not a requirement necessarily. Yeah. And, and so the only thing that I thought of when I talked to the engineers today uh, was, which they're probably going to do anyways, they just didn't have it on the plan, was pull a sleeve. Mm -hmm. A sleeve is another mm -hmm. pipe that the, the real pipe will go into. So mm -hmm. if there's ever a problem, it can just be a new line put into it. Yep. And then you won't have to Sorry. bore again or open dig or whatever. It's just for, for a 60 feet of four inch pipe, I think it's money well spent yeah. for the future. Plus it will also protect the, the force main. Yeah, it's going to be visualized to me. So. And this is all, this is all, what you guys are describing is, it's your project. What we're, what we're approving is use of the town right away to complete the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So really, I guess the question is, do we have any conditions or concerns? The only one that I have is, is the sleeve. And being you. that for it, there's no compaction necessary. Do you want to document things for you? The road will, yeah. be, yeah. will be open yeah. all the time. We want to close the road. Or it's no very little impact to our road at all. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, Alfred, I am here for you to take good notes on what our, const on our condition is. What's it called? A sleeve? But is, there a bed is there a formal name? Uh, that's what I, that's what they call a sleeve. It's, uh, it's an outer pipe. Run, right, run the, run the force main into a sleeve underneath the road. Or force is in the right of way. Let's do that. You can specify any depth. I mean, force I mean, the main? Depth. Forced mm -hmm. down for water. I, say, mm -hmm. I, would, I would think they are probably going to get it even up. Mm -hmm. You know, the engineer is going to specify that in the design. It's a pressurized so yeah. it's, and it's running within a sleeve. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So we're horizontal drilling. Four feet? Yeah. To accommodate that. Is that sufficient? Minimum depth. Get myself out of the middle. Oh, there you go. It has a minimum depth of four feet. from the board on the port, port of parking application. Okay, so is there a motion to approve with the condition that Alpha described in John's document? So moved. One second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So we are going to circulate this and sign it and mm -hmm. then it'll get delivered to the town offices what and I usually, be recorded. Yeah, it has to be recorded. What I usually do is I would scan it and send you a copy of the signed document so that you have it. Okay. And then get the hard copy to the town office for recording. Does that work? Uh, I will scan it here tonight. You have a scanner with you? No. Um, do we have to fill this? in all this property lots? Yeah. Well, there was no parcel or property lot number on the application.
pass this around while we take up the, the next one. Um, Rick, to be more, I should have asked for this. Is there going to be a motion on the Chiburro one? I just, it's nice if we can just start with that. And we all know I think, yeah. Uh, well, okay. <coughs> Um, okay, Alfred, tell us about the next one. Uh, the next one is a um, little bit different. He wants to open dig it. There's a water line uh, across the road to get to a field where he wants to grow garlic. Um, so, I guess very similar recommendations that I would have is a sleeve within the right way. Also, uh, compaction is crucial. That's after it's approved. It's done. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to hand it back to me, I'll scan it. So, no. a sleeve and compaction. Yep. And also, they're going to have to close the road. So, they're going to have to close the road. They can do half at a time. project within X hours or X days of starting? Eight hours. Uh, yeah, eight hours. I mean, I, we certainly don't want, you know, him out there working at 10 o'clock at night with the hole open in the road, right? They're on eight hours during daylight. I mean, most contractors would, yeah, they would plan that so that they're doing right. the work in the road. And then compaction, is that the word you use when it's complete? And then you'll inspect it, yep. correct? And you're not going to actually be doing the work, is that my understanding? That's correct. Okay. On this one. To road commissioner inspection, okay. Anything else? So what I've written is front porch form. Notice of road closure, use traffic calming cones, complete the project within an eight hour window in daylight, compaction when complete, subject to road condition inspection. Got it? Yep. Any questions? Comments? Please? No, I was only paying I was doing this. Okay. Oh, gross and barrel. Uh yes. Yeah. Is, is there good, right? Yeah. Is there a motion to approve this Cecil Town right away permit subject to the conditions described? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
When is he going to, he's going to start that, like, right away, you know? I honestly don't know how to not swap them. I mean, I'm sure that okay. this is what he's been waiting for. I mean, he's been kind of going, first he was, and then he was, and then he was back. Right. Yeah. 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 to the 
a site visit. It was held this past weekend on that subdivision <coughs> proposal on Bain Kamali Road. So, in the preparation for that, I did a little bit of digging. Have you, in uh, any past experience, applied land use regulations of any kind? Yeah, pretty extensively, having worked for a number of conservation organizations that held conservation easements. I mean, easements in their own way are sort of a mini zoning regulation, or permitted uses, prohibited uses. Landowners come and request certain rights, um, and so you're always interpreting those permitted and prohibited uses against the requests. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes it involves, it dovetails with local land use regulations that most, most conservation easements will require consistency with local laws and regulations. And so oftentimes we were doing our reviews in conjunction with local government agencies. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Mm -hmm. um, not to insult, but do you understand what the term quasi-judicial means? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There, and there's training. Yeah. There's training. Yeah. Denise, you, you want to take the reins and ask a couple questions? Uh, you've already talked about you sort of have experience with the legal process and, you know, how hearings work and deliberations, quasi-judicial, so you, sounds like you have a pretty good idea what that is. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one of the hardest questions is because it's callous and everybody knows everybody and you know your neighbors and so on and so forth. What if there was a development that you were sitting on and it didn't meet the requirements necessary to um, grant a permit? What would you do? If it didn't really, if it did not meet the requirements, mm -hmm. then I think it would have to be denied if, it, if it's that plain and simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that it's usually not. <laughs> 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 so, uh, pretty rare that it's black and white, but if your question is not black and white, then I would say it has to be denied. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't have anything to say. John asked most of my other questions, so. Okay. Sorry, I didn't know no, that there was a line. Okay. <laughs> We have, we have some polishing to do in our process. Rick, do you have any questions you want no, to have? No, no. I think you'll make a good member. Dennis, do you have questions for us? I just have four. You want to know how much it pays? <laughs> no. Um, no, I don't have any questions. I had, I, I had a great, long conversation with Ann um, in just the chair. and. Um, and Denise, I did get the uh, uh, approval for the, uh, for some reason I couldn't get into that training that. Uh, oh yeah, I just, I just had to say, I had to, be I had to click authorized. on it. Yeah, so, so you should be all set. So I'll do that, and I think she had to go to the previous training through from all of these cities. Yes, yep, yep, go on their website, see what you find, sign yourself up, the town can pay for it. Right. Yep. And also check some of the Reading of Planning Commission's website oh, for training. Okay. Okay. So, so do you think that, that online training, the video training, I'm sorry, the, the training that you had to really, that's a, pre, that's a prerequisite to sitting on any case, so you have to yep. complete it? Yep. Okay. Right, before you sit on any cases as a number. Right. right. But that's a, I think it's only a couple, maybe an hour and a half, 90 minutes? I think maybe it's two hours. Two hours, something. Yeah. So now you got all this free time. Yeah, you know, right. You can watch it a couple of times. <laughs> Um, okay, so you're all set. Any other? You have no more questions. No, okay. No. Thank you. Thank you for stepping forward. Thank you for engaging yes. to the point that yeah. you've talked to to Anne. You have the materials. You you have already started rolling up your sleeves. Yeah. I'm really yeah. appreciate thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you back. Awesome. Yeah. Glad, glad to have you back. So you are a candidate for a three-year term that ends in. 2025. So we need a motion to appoint Dennis Schaefer to the GRB Sorry. for a three year term ending 2025. Uh, this motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. okay, we got you now. Great. Thank uh, you. Yeah, and so um, you, 
I think this means we have, no, we have one more seat on the DRB, uh, regular, regular seat, so to speak. I mean, everybody's a, on the DRB, but in different seats. So you're, the, you're number six, we have a candidate for the number seven oh, seat. So okay. the DRB will have the full slate of regular members, and I'm hoping um, after the next meeting also to have a full slate of alternates. Great. So Dennis, thank you very much for being part of that. And so is this effective immediately? Yeah, effective, because there is a it is effective, it is effective immediately. Yes, yes, right yes. Yep. yes, effective immediately. Yep, it is. Yep. So get the homework done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the other, the other thing, thank you, Dennis. Yep. Thanks, uh, Dennis, good to yep. see you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. The other, uh, so Megan Sullivan, who we appointed to the board um, in January, has asked to step away as a regular member and to be said as an alternate. So, um, so moved. For a three-year term ending in 2024. And I'll second that. Okay. Uh, any other questions or thoughts about that? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 So Megan is filling a currently vacant alternate term. And Lisa, those terms are actually on the agenda tonight, yeah. so you can grab it from there. Okay. All right, friends. Okay, I have. I don't know. Romans. We might have to do it from this laptop. Hi, Cliff. Can you hear me? Beans. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, it's working. Yay. Okay. So I got it to work, Cliff. Aren't you amazed? Nice. <laughs> I'm amazed. <laughs> Good job. All right. Um, that's just for the time. We, we're all, we're ready for the friends. I can turn this around. I didn't do the TV screen, but I'll put, turn this around. Do the Can everybody see Cliff? You want to come up? Do you guys have, is everybody, everybody's here yeah. for friends? Are you all friends? Are you all friends? They are. <laughs> friends of the friends. I can go to the line. You guys don't get along with each other, you can't. I can actually go to the line. Actually, you can. Except he needs his smart water. Oh, I'm sorry. So, um, the, the floor is yours uh, to present where you are on the agreement. We all have it in our materials. Uh, to raise any issues, changes we should be aware of, highlights you want us to know about, questions you well, have. Well, are you the lead there? Yeah. He's our, he's, he is our fearless leader. Yeah, and I, and I had sent, I don't know if anybody else did, but I sent some questions around. I don't know if they got, I sent it to Cliff. Cliff? Yeah. And yeah, I received a copy of Okay, good, all right. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Well, and just, yes. All right, and just to be clear, this other document we already signed, which is the usage policy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're not really looking at that unless for some reason somebody noticed something we should change. Actually, I, you know, I, I confess that I didn't look, mm -hmm. that, that wasn't in the folder, so I didn't look at it. Yeah, it was. Was it? Yep. Really? Okay. Um, well, I didn't look at it in any case. Well, the main thing is this one. Right. Which is, Do we have to renew the usage policy? I, um, How long is that good for? That's a very good question. You need to look at it again in July. July 2020. Oh, it goes on our July list. 22. Pending items. Yeah. Okay. Carry it away, guys. And first, first off, I wanted to thank you guys so much for all the work you did on this. It was a lot of work. Thank you. Thanks to the uh, select board for letting us uh, present today. And uh, also, thank you for allowing me. Sorry I couldn't be there in person. So I thank you for allowing me to participate by Zoom. Um, what, if it pleases the board, what I'd like to do is just kind of uh, quickly move through the document, um, discuss the different sections, and then uh, take questions as we reach any section where members of the board might have some questions or need further clarification, if that 
works for everyone? Uh, that sounds great, Cliff. You're, Cliff, you're aware, I don't know, if, can you, you can't see me anywhere, so it doesn't matter where I'm looking. Um, we have until about 8.40, so we're in good time, and good shape on timing. I just wanted to make you aware of that, so go ahead, thank you. Yes, I saw that on the agenda, so I think that's why we want to try and move through them as quickly as possible. I think some of these are pretty straightforward. I'll just pick right off. Um, we all understand the, I think, the reason for entering into this agreement is so that the uh, friends can take on the task of managing uh, non-municipal activities at the hall. The, um, the Design Review Board uh, graciously opened up the hall as a multi-use uh, facility. And so now we are in a position to be able to hold not only municipal activities there, but non-municipal activities, uh, cultural events, plays, um, music, um, informational sessions, a whole variety of things. Um, so the idea was is the Friends Forum to be able to support the select board in being able to uh, conduct these kind of activities there and more or less take it off of the select board's hand for having to manage that sort of activity. So that's the purpose. And is there any questions on that opening section? No. Hearing none. Okay. Uh, next is a little brief bit about the Friends and who we are, what we are. This is right out of the Friends bylaws, actually. Um, it basically establishes the fact that we are a nonprofit organization, private independent, um, and we formed to assist the select board in management administration of non municipal activities at the hall and also help preserve the historical integrity. And, um, support uh, fundraising efforts to um, make sure that the hall, um, we put a lot of time and effort into uh, bringing the hall back from where it was, and we want to see that uh, be maintained going into the future. And also, ultimately, we hope to be able to uh, continue some of the work that occurred in the room you're sitting in now upstairs, uh, revitalized upstairs, so they can ultimately become hopefully a year-round space for use as well. Any questions on that section of the document? Hearing none, okay. <laughs> Next, moving into the management duties, um, really just a series of bullet points about what the friends are hoping to do, um, and that uh, these are some of the things that the select board can expect from us rather than read through each bullet point. I trust everyone had a chance to review the document ahead of this meeting. So I would just ask if anyone needs any clarification on any of those bullet points or anything in this section. Okay, we're moving right along. Glad this is self-explanatory. Next section, uh, payment for services. Uh, so we are asking um, the town to recognize and provide a, a level of support to the Friends Group by uh, providing us with uh, $500 annually. Um, this money would be used to support the activities that you see listed and bullet pointed in the management duties in the previous section. Um, Denise had asked the question about the last sentence in that section about friends is authorized to contract with others to assist in providing these services. Uh, she was wondering what does that mean, who might we contract with? So I can give a simple example there. If you refer back to the management duty section, um, you'll see the last bullet point there, maintain the friends membership database and use it to help raise funds and promote events. Um, we feel that we can handle that right now, but at some point it may make sense, may make sense for us to bring in a third-party agent, a contract with them to help us uh, do a, a focused fundraising effort, for example. Or we might want to contract with a software vendor to help us uh, get the most out of our database of friends and members and whatnot. So that's why we have the idea that uh, we could also work with outside contractors, third parties, and of course it would be Fred's responsibility to maintain that relationship and make sure things are according to oil. So does that answer your question, Denise? Yeah, I, 
have been, and what I was thinking of when I saw that was, so you might use something, you might buy some software called like Little Green Light or something to, exactly. to keep track of your, as a database for keeping track of donations and donors and all that. Okay, just wanted to understand. Or we in contact with an individual or a, a um, company to help us do, like I say, a focused fundraising campaign or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. So we wanted to acknowledge that possibility to the select board and make sure you were aware that that was a possibility as well. Any other questions or comments on that section? Uh, the payment for services section? Or that's where we are. Yeah. Okay. Can I can I ask one question? This section jumps back a little bit. It, it the authority like when when a project is because we're collecting fees on both sides to be able to fund improvements and maintenance. What's the decision making structure about what actually gets done and what doesn't get done? Is it done by the friends? Is it done by the select board? Especially for optional like improvements upstairs to bring that to you know. A four season type occupation. Uh, like uh, How, what is the. Uh, has to be a select It has to be selected. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't for example, um, one of the things, and I apologize if I don't answer your question completely, Rick, because um, I'm it's experiencing some of the issues with the sound quality there, but uh, I think you're asking about processes for uh, coordinating with the. Uh, select board on uh, money raising efforts and improvements and whatnot. We would never undertake anything uh, in any part of the hall without approaching the select board first and saying we have an idea. We think uh, it might make sense to um, put in some sound and light equipment upstairs, and we uh, have received some quotes for that. We have the money to do it. But before we engaged in that, we wanted to uh, run it by the select board and see if you had any questions or concerns or ideas for making it even a better project. Um, and at this point, I might uh, okay. defer to members of the Friends who are there in attendance because they may have some additional thoughts on this as well. David or anyone else? I yeah, I mean, just what Cliff said. There, there are obviously plans that do pretty major improvements upstairs, um, especially lighting equipment, sound equipment, and I don't feel like we would just have like, free range to do whatever, obviously. So, um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, a dollar figure amount that is a limit or whatever, we would expect, I would expect that we'd be required to come to you at least on some level for approval on some things. And, and I was thinking that I'd seen this when I, in the document, and I just found it, uh, in the bullet points in the earlier section, it says that one of the roles is to make recommendations to the town on facility improvement needs and notify us of building and grounds maintenance issues, which actually ties into the, the, the idea we've talked about of having a public works person who has you know, more engagement with facilities than we have. Yeah. You know, we have somebody to do work now but not take real responsibility for it. I just want to clarify yeah. on that process of yep. who's actually making the ultimate decision. And, yeah, a good example. A year ago, we applied for a grant. We did not get it to improve the upstairs. Mm -hmm. Sam, we brought that grant to you. I think any plan to uh, to develop the upstairs would definitely have to be in consultation with you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yet, realistically, how much are you going to pursue to develop the upstairs? So I think that's our job. In other words, bringing, actively looking at the upstairs, trying to do something to bring it to the point where it can be used and uh, continually improved over time, but always doing it in, in close consultation with you. So you guys would take the lead on like the visioning for upstairs and then run it by us and we can right. make adjustments. But right. Yeah. And can I just for Lisa's benefit, Lisa, this is Artie Tulis. Yeah. And David Sheets is the one who last Yes. Okay. I just had friends of Cal town hall members and then I was gonna yeah. try to fill in the blanks. <laughs> yeah, I can help you with the names. Thanks. Stay friends. Keep going, Cliff. Thank okay, you. Rick, if your 
question sufficiently addressed. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. So really, literally the protocol question. That sounds good. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so moving on, uh, we kind of already segued into this a little bit, the disbursement of the rental fees. So as discussed, uh, the friends will also look at the possibility of renting alcohol to third parties. Uh, when we do that, we have established a uh, rental fee structure and we're proposing an 80-20 split with the town, 20% of the rental fees coming directly to the town, which uh, can be tapped into for upkeep and maintenance um, on the hall. We're hoping that uh, we can help contribute to that greatly over time. Of course, it will be a small seed that will require nutrients, but as time progresses, we're hoping it can blossom into a tree that bears uh, delicious fruit for all of us. Um, there is also um, a question from Denise about how that would work. Denise, I'm certainly not an expert on Nimric, but I would suspect that yes, you would need to set up a separate category in Nimric right. to keep track of funds coming from the friends and then tapping into those funds and using it for uh, the hall. And yes, I would imagine that that fund would carry over year to year. But then again, that um, yeah. isn't specifically spelled out in this management agreement. So the like board may have other ideas that, uh, well, you know, we'll allow that fund to carry over with this amount of money uh, year to year and over and beyond falls back into the general fund. That would be kind of something you'd have to discuss with the treasurer. Right. Because right. I'm, I'm, what I'm thinking is we might have to establish a reserve fund so that the money can, if there's money left at the end of the fiscal year, it can be moved into the reserve fund. But that's something that the board can check into. Exactly. Okay. I just, wanted, I just wanted to make sure I understood that that's kind of what, what you were looking for. So, so and I, maybe this is a technical thing, um, or I'm just not understanding it, Cliff. Um, there's a 20% disbursement of fees. Shouldn't it be of the net, or the, the net app of fees? I mean, you're going to have some expenses depending on what is going on here, I anticipate. And so there may be a or maybe your schedule takes us into account. Um, this, is, this is just fees. Yeah, I think I think there will be there are other revenue streams that the, the friends will have if they want to have you know there's um, we can provide sound person we can provide a lane person and those are fees outside of the rental oh, fee. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have the cleaning fee will be separate too. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the cleaning fee falls that that might be true, okay. but, but there is so this is a free country I think like if someone wants to rent the hall we have the schedule laid out if it's so many dollars per day or per hour or whatever, it's, it's very well laid out. And that 80-20 split is out of that. There are other revenues that can be okay. coming to the friends that are outside of that. So this one's really clear. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just the rental fee. It's just the rental fee. It's just the rental fee. Right. Okay. The town will get 20% of just the rental fee and none of the, no percentage of if you rent out equipment. Separate right, those are separate, those right? are just strictly okay. rental. So, yep. yeah, that 20% is of the actual rental fee yeah. of the okay. space. Right. And what I, and on the point of cleaning... So, yeah, we built into the schedule, as as has been alluded to here, uh, the fee schedule, there are uh, codicils for administrative fees, management fees, and things like this that go to offset that. So this would be a straight 80-20 uh, split right off the top of the total rental fee. I'm hoping that answers your question, John. All right, so we get 20 cents and you guys get 80 cents. Or with a fee exactly. greater. <laughs> and with the understanding that uh, the, the 80 cents uh, is coming back to the hall, going into uh, the activities that the friends are engaged in, um, to promote the hall, to help with the upkeep of the hall, all of those things that you see bullet pointed in the uh, management duty section and elsewhere within this document. I should also point out here that in the Friends Bylaws, it is specifically stated that none of the members of the board are allowed to accept the salary or monies. Okay, so. All of this money is for the hall. Okay. Is, is there any reason? 
Is there any reason for even returning the 20% to the board? Just designating 20% in, yes. you know, of the revenues. Yes. Yes. There yes. is. Yes. Well, okay. yes. Um, probably, this is old. You weren't here. Well, right. probably many right. reasons, but one is I'm just thinking that. We're, we're, we're a, we're, well, a, yeah, wear and tear, um, and we're going to get help with on, ongoing. Um, well, and there's also, me. but that capital fund, that one percent capital fund that we have right. talked about as a guidance for budgeting. That it will be interesting. I, I, I guess probably twenty percent of the rental fees won't fund it, but it helps. Right, and you know, and also. The town will be paying, you know, it'll be on our electricity bill, our heat bill. Mm -hmm. So the twenty percent will help with some of those costs. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know that makes sense. I, I'm just mm -hmm. asking the question mm -hmm. whether that's kind of an extra. Yeah. I mean, if that was designated in the plow. in the agreement. Do we plow the driveway? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do we stuff. just we got stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, and then obviously that won't cover. We're going to run out of time. Maintenance. We are going to run out of time. One thing I do want to note, though, for everybody is that this is a one-year contract, and we have, as Denise mm -hmm. just said, we've we've this is what the third or fourth time we went. We've been through right. this pretty thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And my skipping ahead to my end comments, I feel like, as Denise said, there's been so much work done. We've all spent time on That's this good. and asked a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And it's a one year. It's one year. So we right. get a chance to try it out and say, okay, this can work, or this worked great. Right. So, well, and you're right. And it's, uh, there's always the, you know, what works, what didn't work, what yeah. do we need to fix, you know, a year from now. Or even sooner, if there's a big issue, we can always reopen this. There's nothing saying we can't. So the rental rate is the fee. Yeah. Can you try and hold on agree to come together? Update the contract. We don't have to wait till the end of the year. Right. Right. You know, it, you know, we're not going to get it perfect right out of the gate. It will be a learning process for all of us. But it is a, I feel, a well thought out starting point. Mm -hmm. And um, we really look to being able to work closely with the select board to make this work not only for the select board and for the friends, but for the entire community because that's really who owns this hall, and that's who we want to see benefit from it. Yeah, I mean, the rest, the rest of my comments, we don't have to Well, I was just gonna go invite, through. I was gonna invite Cliff to continue because the contract itself is only another page or so. Yeah. Cliff, feel free to just keep talking unless we ask you to stop, and, okay. and, and just keep moving to introduce us to it. And okay. we've been being interested in each of these questions as you go. And we have right. about 10 more minutes. Yep. All right. We can do that. Next section talks about scheduling and cancellations. So we understand that, first and foremost, the hall exists to support municipal activities. We will make every effort to make certain that anything we, we schedule at the hall falls outside so as not to interfere with municipal activities. We also understand that things can happen. Something unexpected can come up and there may be an occasion where, um, I think it's gonna be rare, but there is conceivably maybe an occasion where the town, the select board needs to say, we need you to bump this event because it's really important that we uh, have this meeting or whatever happening. Um, we have a clause in this contract and in the, the general terms and conditions of rentals about force majeure um, when it's things that are outside of our scope of uh, being able to deal with. But uh, we do imagine a scenario where, let's say, the friends decided they wanted to have an event um, and it was going to be catered and we paid a deposit and the um, rules of that were that if we had to cancel uh, the caterer got to retain the deposit. We are asking that the select board would understand this would be an expense the friends would incur and would be willing to help offset in the event that they needed to bump an event from the schedule. Once again, I say I imagine that would be a very rare scenario, but we do have to acknowledge it. Moving on to records and reporting, we understand the importance of transparency. So we will make sure to submit annual reports to the town of any of the non-municipal activities that are occurring at the hall. Um, we will also provide the 
select board with uh, financial reports that are provided to us by our treasurer. And we will also make these available to the town uh, to review. We will also uh, make sure every year that we submit a summary report on non-municipal activities and friends activities that are taking place at the hall to include in the annual town report. Uh, next up, we talk about independent events presented by the friends and boards of directors. We're asking the board to consider allowing the friends to present uh, five events a year at no charge to the friends. Uh, we imagine these uh, being the types of events like perhaps an informational session or a speaking event or something uh, rather benign, uh, simple, but something that promotes goodwill within the community, perhaps a, a showing of some historical artifacts. David, perhaps you could elaborate upon this a little bit. Elaborate. Say that one more time. Uh, elaborate on this sort of independent events that might be presented by the friends in the course of the year? So we're proposing that we have a series of events in the fall, and it would be modeled after a similar series that some of you may have attended at the Plainfield Opera House. In fact, Tobin Anderson, <clears throat> who has been very active with that, effort is now on our board for um, this town hall. So he's doing two town halls now. Um, and we would put together a, a series of, uh, particularly with Artie and Nancy as advisors, Tobin as an advisor, a nice variety of uh, music uh, to take place up in the hall. Do you guys have anything further to mention? Yeah, different, different, yeah, not different just, concerts. Not just, it's, it's, it's basically, we're just asking for for our work, and we have you know the events that we sponsor that wouldn't be charged the fee. Okay, so these, and that was my question: Would there be a fee, or would it be like by donation? Just that we we wouldn't have to pay the private fees. Oh, right, no, but I'm asking: Would the friends charge a fee for these five? events or ask for a donation or something like that and then you would just keep it right yeah yeah as we would with other events it's really not a whole lot of other events that may happen because you know there may be charges at the door for other events we're just asking for based on our mutual agreement that we would get five right. events a year that right. so there's, there's no rent rent. There's, i guess my point is there's no rental so the town doesn't get 20 percent of anything correct right okay that's for those point. for those five, right. five events yeah okay sounds good Okay, and uh, in the second uh, section of that, it mentions that the friends would be solely responsible for handling expenses and proceeds from these events and compensating anyone where compensation was due. Um, the next section talks about independent contractors. Uh, this kind of alludes back to engaging third parties as well. Um, we may need from time to time to bring in an independent contractor to help uh, set up a a particular stage, a uh, series of stage props or something like that. We would never employ anyone directly. It would always be under a third party contractual basis. They would bear responsibility for paying the, the workers' taxes and whatnot. Um, and these third party contractors would not be considered employees of the town, so there would not be no need for concerns about the the town's insurance covering them. They would have to carry their own insurance and the friends would make sure that these are bonded people and do in fact have insurance. And we even make sure that the town is held harmless for anything that might happen under such an arrangement. Uh, the next one is just a quick uh, statement regarding the little closet upstairs off to the side of the stage. Um, we coordinate because the uh, town clerk utilizes that space to store some things in, but we might need to use that space from time to time. We're thinking like during the course of a play or something, be able to store a few things in there. We would always coordinate that with the town clerk and make sure there was no conflict or, or problems caused by that. I'm sorry, Cliff, which space is that? It's upstairs, John. If you're looking at the stage, the stage, the stage right. there's a little there's a door on back. If you're facing the stage, it's to the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's some election materials in uh, there right now, and there is also the backup server in there that uh, backs up all of the data from the, the town hall via the um, dedicated uh, uh, 
satellite connection that we established. Huh. It's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Four minutes, okay, right? on our tech uh, insurance, we would, uh, the Prince will carry its own insurance. We uh, did verify uh, that the town's insurance would not cover non municipal activities, so this is necessary that the Prince do this. We would mirror the uh, town's insurance policy, uh, provide a, a copy of the proposed coverage that we are looking to uh, purchase. Uh, so I hope everybody had a chance to look at that and uh, make sure that it satisfies any concerns you might have there. Question. Finally, Question. Um, does that, if you guys have an event here and there's alcohol served and now that marijuana is legal, marijuana provided or allowed, does the insurance cover um, if there's an incident or someone gets hurt? And they, anyone people, they blame it on intoxication. The condition of the rental is that anyone who wants to have an event where they're serving alcohol or other spirits, as it were, uh, it has to be permitted and they have to carry their own insurance for that specific case. And who will be responsible for reviewing that insurance and ensuring it meets the test and it ends active the day of the event, right? It will come before the board of the prints for the entire board to review and approve. Okay. And if we have concerns, we would then turn to the site board and say, are you okay with this as well? Okay, you will. Okay. This is, that's a we really... We might want to run it by our attorney. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now, that, now that's, a, that's a really nice development from the first time we looked at this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that was one of the biggest things was the insurance yeah. piece. Yeah. Well, so insurance and alcohol. Work. Yeah. Right. So they would be... They would have to carry their own insurance. Yeah, so yeah, good work. work. And there is such a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can get a, a one a day. You can get a one day insurance a one day policy. policy. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's remarkably easy. Yeah, you know, we we would provide this somebody wants to rent a hall and uh, serve uh -huh. alcohol, have alcohol served in the course of the event they're staging. We even have some connections we can provide them with that will uh, write up the underwrite the insurance for them. Yeah. For, for, for day policy or multi-day if it's an extended event. A lot of a lot of caterers yeah. will get a one day policy if they're right. catering. Well the regular caterer has, probably have a full yeah. well they probably do, but if they only serve alcohol once in a while then they usually do just a one day thing. Yeah. Wow. So they're very cool have some people on the Friends Board who have experience in these matters and uh, know about uh, these large events and how to conduct them in a uh, positive and uh, conducive manner that uh, works to the benefit of all. Finally, we come to the duration of the agreement. I just arbitrarily picked the date of May 1st because I thought, you know, we may need additional time to review this and whatnot, but if we're ready to move forward this evening, I think that's a good date to start with and for the agreement to kick in. Denise had asked the question, would the friends be coming to the board every year when it's time to renew? And yes, we would, we're actually um, in the process of creating an annual calendar of tasks for the friends and uh, we would put it in for uh, April to approach the board every April and say, okay, it's time for us to sit down and look and see what works, what doesn't, and see if we're ready to go for another year. Yeah, well, yeah that's, 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 that's good. So we don't have to remember. Well, yeah, we, I was like, dang, when you're done with that calendar, you can make us one. Uh, Cliff, a couple, a couple of thoughts on the date. One is only that we didn't warn this as an item to approve tonight. Um, and two, I don't have a copy that we could actually circulate and sign. So how would you feel about bumping the date to May 15? Our next meeting is May 9th. May 9th. And we could formally adopt this document that night and be prepared to sign it. Does that really hinder you guys in any way? I mean, you're hearing me say that I think we would adopt it. Yeah. Um, I think we can work with that. I'll open it to the other members of the Friends in case they have any concerns to voice. No, it's just we've been waiting a long time. So <laughs> yeah. we're anxious to get started over here. Right. right. Yeah. No. And we won't and actually no, we won't actually even discuss it. We'll put it on the consent agenda. And so it'll be part of a, you know, top of the top of the meeting. Everybody okay with this staff? Right. We'll, 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 we'll do we'll circulate the same. So there'd be no like it wouldn't be like discussion again. No, 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 no. We would uh, vote to approve it and authorize the board to sign it. 
We send around the signature page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing is, Cliff, April may be, um, can you put your trigger um, into March for a May review? Just because I'm thinking of, thinking um, to get it on the agenda. St stuff that hits our agenda in April. And we've been like, yeah, sorry. Or hits the radar in April. Yeah, we um, can use uh, we can use town meeting as our trigger and yeah, right after a town yeah, meeting, yeah. we can send a notice to the board saying we would request an audience yep. to review the uh, management agreement for the upcoming year. Yeah, no, and, and the kind of calendar that you talked about has been on my mind for us as well because there's a number of things that recur that recur and yet we don't you know if somebody doesn't remember it. You know, oh, guess what? So, so, so I would suggest, in terms of the term, yeah, um, you said the 15th item. I'd suggest that it's effective upon that it's said effective upon signature for a year from the date of signature, mm -hmm. and that there be language to allow the contract to be continued in the event it does not get renewed timely yeah. by the select board for up to six there is, days. There or is something. something in here. Continuation language, um, we don't get to it. Something about it, something it, it automatically renews. Where is it? We have, we have that. You have that, what he's asking for. Yeah. It's already in here that it will yeah. automatically yeah. renew. Right. Oh, so, great. Yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> uh, so, but notwithstanding, at least, uh, I, I think that an active engagement, at least for the, f the first year, for us to all say, well, you know what I said earlier. How's it going? How did it work? What do we need to change? Really important. Yeah, this is this is a learning curve for us too. I mean, we yeah. do a lot of research and based on the same things similar to the playing field and other spaces. But you know, we're gonna let it do so. Right. Yeah, I mean, especially the first time around, coming back together yeah. to say, hey, this worked great. Any tweaks? Yeah. Are you planning on? Yeah. Are you guys will have a presence at town meeting too? I assume. I was going to write, so you'll get yeah. that up and that's a great say. So, yeah, especially if you just, yes. yeah. Especially we can go back to yeah. in person town meetings, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just yeah, we love to present. I mean, that's great to be able to vote at town meeting two years ago to prove this. So, yeah, we'd like to tell people what's going on. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you very so much. much. Thanks a lot for your work. Cliff, great. thank you so much. Thank you, Cliff. Good thank to see you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will revise the uh, section as discussed to make it effective. Duration of the agreement effective one one year the date of signature and I will extend the signatures for the board so there's spaces for each of the board members to sign. Perfect. And okay. we see the document to you. All right, sounds good. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's I know it's been a long time. Thanks, friends. It's it, it's yeah, it's a good document. I think we should you you guys really have done all the work to feel a little good about about where where it's coming, what, what we're launching it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cliff, pat on the back. Yeah. Is it your first event with Duncan Booth with, from the select board? Uh, yeah. 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 Great fundraiser. Your first event. Yeah. Your first event. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave the Chill with dry ice. Bye, Cliff. Thank you. Thank you, Cliff. Okay, let, let's uh, turn our attention to Channel Highway 7. Um, Thank you. And Thank you. Theory. Um,
Denise, once we once we announce the site visit. Yep. Um, I'll just have to put the notes back together again. And what's so you I think you were gonna like put wrap your head around like a timeline and what what's the back yeah, of the we have to have we have to give um, I guess it's, I think it's 30 days notice, but we need to work in some time in case because of the mail. Right. So I would suggest we do 40 days. Okay, so we are well we are, we're ready we are well that. into black flies. Yeah. Into black flies. Can we wait till after black flies? Well no, black black flies might be. Yeah, we'll just have to suck it up. Bring your nets. Yeah, man. Um I, I am likely not gonna be here like mid-June. Like one of those weeks. Well we want I think we want to do it when I wanna make sure that you're Seven. here. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important for you to be here. Can you I, I don't know. I'm gonna go pick up a piece of equipment. And 40 days. And they're saying around mid June. I won't know until. Um, can we set the? I mean, I, I can. I can not leave. I mean, it, it, I if you know what it is. Flexible in terms of what okay. I, I just. Yeah. So what is 40 days? I think we want to do it on six a weeks Saturday. Six weeks from tonight. One, two, three, four, five. Six is June Monday, June six. Do so we want to do it on a But do we? That's a Monday, so that's right, forty-two so days. So do we so want to do it on a weekend? Yeah. Saturday, June. Saturday, June four. Saturday, June four. Saturday, June is four. forty days. Sorry. Literally forty days from now, I believe. I and well, I'm not gonna have time to get it out. So can you, you want to get it eleven? Yeah, Saturday. the following Saturday. I have a funeral on the eleventh. You're expecting someone to die. I was going to say you know that. Well, answer. whatever. What is it called? It's not mine, is it? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I have a I'm family event to go to on the 11th. Not that, you've been, not that we need to plan it on my schedule, mm -hmm. but if the goal is to have... Well, I think if there's enough of us um, getting this, we just need to get this done. Yeah, we do. And we need to allow a couple of hours for the site visit. Is that could, we, could we... Then allow a couple hours for the site visit, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe between uh, the start of the site visit and the start of the deliberation. Right, and I don't know. Hearing. What I don't know is, I guess we can say the the hearing will be immediately following the site visit and yes. not put in a start time. Yes. And That's that allows that gives us the opportunity if it's an hour. Yeah, well, the problem hours. last time was that it was yeah. at about 10.30, which is half an hour after. Right, well, the reason, I, the reason we did that was because um, you don't have to walk the whole site. You can if you want, and, but, but by statute, you don't have to. You just have to show up there, say you were, you were there, and then do the hearing. But it sounds, from what I'm hearing now, is people want to really do the full site visit, so then we should make sure that we just say the site visit is at 10 and with the hearing to immediately follow afterwards. So we may have Wait another notification issue too, just for mine. No, yeah. and hang on, we also have Mark gone for that period. No, he's back. By June 18th? Pretty sure. Oh, no. you know. I mean, if there's, as long as there's three of us at the site visit. Um, well, but not just the site visit. If you're going to do the hearing after, it's the whole right. It's the whole thing with just seems like people. I wrote. Seems like I wrote down Mark's schedule somewhere last time. Send the thing in April. Look. Um, I found it before. I think Mark is back because he was going to be gone. Yeah, he's back. He was going to be gone most of May. Yeah, it was a May thing. Yeah. So that's four of us. I just want to, this has been hanging around and hanging around. I just want to get this out. Let's mm -hmm. just do it. Yeah, years. Yeah. All right, so we're looking at June 11th. Is that what you had something you were going to say about it, John? Um, we had returned mail. One, I can't remember the other one, but I know one was from the Lumberjack, Lumberjack Company. Mm -hmm. And there was no forwarding address. 
and yet somehow they, they knew about everything having not received the mail. So somebody called them, which is fine, but we don't know what their official address is. I'm wondering how they get their tax bill. Well, this guy, it's, is this guy Cushman, from Cushman and Wakefield, is David Schneider? Have you been in contact with him? No. Does, is it, no, the only contact that I Because he, they represent, John, they represent Lumberjacks. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to get, ten, I want, it should go to, are they a legal representative or are they, a, are they attorneys at law? I mean, if they're like a uh, consultant firm, that's Cushman and Wakefield, asset, trust manager of asset, and agent for. So they must be. They, I just don't want to go through this process and have the thing nullified by some court because they took us to court and we mailed it to the wrong person. Well, I can contact this. I can I mean, call this guy. It should go to him, yes, but whoever gets the tax bill. <coughs> yeah, we should check that out. If it out. ain't him, then it should, we need to find out who that is. The, person, well, the, the entity that gets the tax bill is the entity that takes care of their tax work. So it's like this firm based in Texas. Is it? Well, we got one in St. Louis, Missouri here, Cushman and Wayfield yeah. writing us. Yeah, that's the do, you have a con do you have a contact name? I, I don't have anything. Um, the, the, the only contact that anyone in town here has made is with the forester who's doing the logging up there, F and W Forestry. And, F, and that F and was, W? Yeah, Paul Hannon knew somebody at F and W. Can you write F and W Forestry on that for me? I'll write it back. Yeah. And where are they? Well, F, you know? F and W might give you quite a bit of They're information. Okay. So I can call them, or John and I can work on yeah. finding the address. Because we don't want anything to well, mess that's, us up. I mean, we can call this, these guys, and they say we could ask them to write, send us an email, and write and send it. They are the legal representative, and they can accept service. Because that's really what it is. Right. So I don't want this thing. I've that's seen right. the games before that attorneys play. You know, it's attorneys. Those darn attorneys. <laughs> okay, so we want to find out are they the legal representative? And can they accept serve legal service? Okay. On behalf of. On behalf of Lumberjack. Right. Okay. I'm still looking for Mark's note on when he's going to be away. Okay. I, I'm it was okay. in April. Yeah, it was in it was well, in, it was April it was in April or something. That he sent us April and April and May, part of May. Yeah. But I'm he's back by June because I've been dealing with him on other stuff with his schedule that's not town related. I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, in, back in February, I talked to Paul Gillis about um, the, word, the wording on, of the resolution. The resolution is sort of a uh, Fisher Cut Bay thing where. Uh, uh, it, it, it's either, um, I'm sorry, it's, it's late and I can't think of the word, but it's, the road is either terminated, which isn't the correct word, discontinued, discontinued. Uh, or not. And uh, so that's what the resolution allows. You've got two choices, discontinue or not. You mean, so the, a lot of, you mean to notice the warning for the hearing yeah. indicated as such? Yeah. yeah. And, and so there's, there's no, if, if the road is not discontinued, fine, we could go on and reclassify it as a trail. But if it is discontinued... Um, well, we have some new legal advice that we're checking into mm -hmm. and see about exactly how that works. Because yeah. I'm, what I'm hearing is it sounds like people want this turned into, I mean, it goes through the Schultz's driveway, 
but I don't think they're opposed to a trail. I mean, Gary's pretty much that's said that. That's not true. That, no, I, they're opposed. They're opposed to a trail? Well, so, but they're, that's they're, not They're at least opposed to a trail at that location. But, but that's not, but some of this is stuff that has to, should be discussed at the hearing. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Exactly. So, so to your point though, we did, um, when we canceled this, the previously scheduled hearing, we did so with announcing that we would, when it was rescheduled, we would do so under a new motion. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we're not, maybe not, be, maybe we're not ready to make the motion yet, but I will share it with you. Is that the motion? It is right here. Um, read because it, it goes to your concern that um, pursuant of, to the, you know, statutes, will conduct and examine the premises and hold a public hearing, each upon public notice to consider discontinuing, blah, blah. Um, the select board may also consider designating the aforesaid town highway to a legal tra trail in the context of this proceeding, and it references specific state statute <coughs> uh, provisions that authorize that. And what you're talking about is something that we've learned a little bit about and we'll continue to learn about with, with consulting legal counsel. Yeah. The difference between laying out a trail, designating a trail, and also, of course, the possibility that um, there's no preconception that the town, the select board would discontinue the road. I mean, that's the whole that's point. Well, that's the whole point of having the site visit and the hearing to see what the select board I would have a question about this in that, you know, can, if you designate that as a trail, like with rail trails, can you, if the need arose, could we redesignate that as a, as a road? Those and are all, reason, those are all things well, I think we need to learn a lot more about yeah, in well, consultation is, with our attorney. Something yeah. I'm yeah. thinking about on that road is that that connects to Worcester Road, ultimately, right? You've got no, like, well, look, we don't know where it goes. That's well, I thought that did. I thought no, that there's, did. there's been right. all, there's disagreement, there are, Read thinks that at some time there may have been a connection. The Schultz has said there no, was not a connection just to the car, to but, the car place. Yeah. But and that's, and then exactly. others say that but this there is, wasn't, and then there's the record that's in the file. So, which is something so, so we all, so we at least as a board need to head into this process with an entirely clean right. slate and right. be open to hearing information. And Rick, this is a good time to remind you that those kinds of conversations where people want to teach you stuff may be inappropriate as ex parte um, in the context of this kind of Well, we haven't scene. scheduled a hearing yet, so there's well, no Well, we haven't scheduled a hearing day, yet, but, it's, but it, you want to be aware that... Yeah. What, I'm trying, what I'm concerned with myself, and this isn't other people, it's about, you know, when the roads usually went somewhere. Mm -hmm. And one thing, if you discontinue it, you're, discon you're discontinuing one, access somewhere. For, and then number two, if there's a point of connectivity, anything that's around Curtis Pond, you know, I think if there's some, if there is some kind of connectivity to say the Worcester Road, mm -hmm. to me, I wouldn't want to get rid of that. Yeah, but I think these are the discussions. Yeah, and it's, it's you not should have these discussions in the context of a hearing. And yeah. certainly not tonight. It's nine o'clock, and okay. so we have other things we need to do. So, are we met ready for this motion? So, um, yeah, pursuant to requirements of Title 19, we saw the sentence. Pursuant to the requirements of Title 19, Chapter 7 of Vermont Statutes Annotated, the Town of Plus, um, the motion is that the Town of Palace Select Board conduct an examination of the premises and hold a public hearing, each upon public notice, to consider discontinuing Town of Highway Number 7, also known as Car, Car Road, as a public highway in the town. Pursuant to 19 VSA, Section 305J, and Section 775. The Select Board may also consider designating the aforesaid town highway to a legal trail in the context of this proceeding. That is the motion. Okay, I'm, I will move the motion. Okay. And Lisa, I'll block, I'll copy this from the email that I had and send you the language. I'll second. Is there any other discussion? Did you put a date? Oh, for, for Saturday, June 11th at, you want to start at 10? At 10, 10 with a hearing. Why don't we start at 9? We're, we're getting late here. I mean, our days. 9? It's late out at 5. Well, I'm not doing it at 5. No, no, I'm saying. 
You know, just let me clear. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to say the day's half over at 10. I don't want to. Oh, come on. I'm serious. I, I don't want to eat my day up. With okay, so 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock with the hearing to immediately follow the site. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. That's the motion. I don't, I don't, you, you want a copy? Well, of we got to vote on the motion. We're gonna, yeah, we got to vote on the motion. <laughs> all right. Is there any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? All right. Read? Yeah, I just, I, I, I brought along a copy of the letter that Paul Gillis wrote to me um, explaining how the original motion could be modified. To right, we, made, we saw that. That's, yeah, that's we saw that, but we made a whole new motion. That so is yeah. this motion. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, I, if you want a copy of this,